Think it'll spin the tires in this dirt, Woody? Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Kent, and this is my 59 Chevy pickup. This will be episode two of our 59 Chevy build and kind of a recap on episode one. We recovered this pickup from one of the neighbors and brought it home. Wanted to make a quick video getting it running and kind of bringing it back to life. Well, when we got it home, we found out the 235 six cylinder in this old 59 was locked up and it was locked up tight. Ended that episode soaking the six cylinder in some Marvel Mister oil for a couple weeks. And also we added some transmission fluid and everything. Everybody was recommending to get this thing unlocked and it just would not move. So if, if you can tell from the pile of parts here, we never got it. I ended up pulling the head. Five of the pistons were free. We got them right out. Pretty forcefully removed the number three piston. It was stuck super tight. Uh, we got it out, cleaned it up. The cylinder walls are in pretty decent shape. I honed all the cylinders. After we removed the head, I took it to a machine shop, had a valve job done got all new piston rings, new rod bearings, and we're gonna try to give this old six cylinder another chance at life. This is not a perfect rebuild. Actually, the engine's still in the truck. We never removed it. We're gonna try to do this whole thing without taking the engine out. And I think it's gonna give this truck another chance at life. I think it's cool that we saved the original engine. I know I told you guys at the end of that last episode that I had another engine, and I do. And this episode was gonna be just a quick engine swap. Well, here's our other engine. This is out of a 61 Chevy pickup, I think. And apparently from 59 to 61, GM changed where their motor mounts were because the 59 has motor mounts up here. And this one doesn't even have bolt holes there on either side. So this is a good running engine. And I guess we'll put it back in storage. I, I could have built motor mounts and made it work. But, you know, we like the idea of the challenge of getting this thing running with what we had. And it's going to keep its original engine. I'm excited to try to get it running. It's not going to be perfect. It might burn a little oil. The cylinder walls are in decent shape. They're not perfect. But hopefully with the new rings, this thing's going to be a runner. And we're going to try to get it together today. I don't know that we'll get it all the way together. But we're going to try to get it assembled where we're real close to running. But I'm gonna go get my son Jack. A lot of you know him, Grow Jack, from our other channel, Grow Jack Outdoors. And Jack and I are gonna get the pistons in this thing right off the bat, and we'll see how far we get. And we'll see if we can give this old truck a second chance at life with its original engine. Thanks for joining us. Let's get into it. Jack showed up, and it is time to get this thing together. I'm gonna pass the camera off to Jack. And this. This isn't meant to be a how-to video, but I will show you guys some, a few things that I would like Jack to know that we're gonna learn along the way. But one of the things I, I wanna show you is some markings on this piston. So all these, marking, all these pistons have that little mark there. When you have a mark like that or a dot or any kind of marking a notch in the top of the piston, that typically goes to the front of the engine, which was true on this engine. That was on the front of every cylinder and Something else, all these pistons have a 30 on them. And your air, if you can see that. That means this engine has been bored. It, is, it has been rebuilt and machined 30 thousandths of an inch bigger than the original piston. So these pistons are, it's been rebuilt. They're a little bit bigger than factory. And with the new rings, hopefully we'll be in good shape and ready for a lot more miles. As of right now, we're gonna get our ring compressor on these rings. This squeezes all these rings in so we can slide the pistons into the cylinders. Well, we've got our ring compressor on number one here. Got some assembly lube on our new bearing, rod bearing. So you want to make sure your compressor is all the way down on your block. 
and then slowly tap it in. Keep pressure on that compressor or your pistons will shoot out in the gap or your rings. Just like that. Number one is in the hole. Yeah. Now we're gonna raise this thing up and connect that to the crankshaft. Five more to go. Five more. We're not gonna make you watch all of them, but <laughs> that's basically the process. We're gonna get them in there and torque to the crank. Then it'll be time to put the head on this thing. Show them crank, um, screwing that one to the crank. Yeah, hop off. <laughs> We're going out of order a little bit because we had some issues on the other ones, but we've got our rod cap, fresh bearing in it, lots of assembly lube, and we're, we've got the piston in place, pulled the rod down to the crank, now we're gonna stick the cap on. See, the, this is the that rod, we got the piston in there, pulled it all the way to the crank. Put the cap on there. that in place and then we will just hand tighten these for now and after we get all the after we get all the pistons in it we will torque them to spec all right jack's on piston two check your mark yep we already oiled the cylinder so remember you got to keep your compressor all the way down on the block Go ahead and give it a little tap all the way around. Gotta keep it down all the way so those rings don't come out of it. So keep tap on my foot right here. Yeah. You did it. Oh yeah. Good job, buddy. All the pistons are in, oil pans on, and we are ready to put the head on. Everything's cleaned up, and like I said, we had a valve job done on this head. It should be good to go. The machine shop also surfaced it, put new valve seals in it. Hopefully it'll be good to go for a lot of miles. It is hot out here. It's about 95 degrees today, and Woody, is out here he's laying on the on the cool shop floor but we got a lot to do i'm not going to film everything because when we run the fans it, it messes the audio up on the video so we're going to kick the fans back on get the head on this thing then we'll see you guys in a minute Well, it's the next day, and as you can see, Jack and I got quite a bit buttoned up last night. We went ahead and finished with the head, got it torqued on. We've got the full rocker assembly on, intake and exhaust manifolds on. We've got oil in it, carburetors on it. We pulled the top off the carburetor last night. And the battery. The old battery's still in it. We still have to put a battery in it. 
we were very surprised the carburetor was really clean so we pulled it kind of washed it out a little bit and stuck it right back together yeah we uh, well we did that <laughs> we really did that <laughs> i really think this thing's going to run today we're really close we have a few things that we need to finish up i just finished i made a little tool to prime the oil system and we just got oil in it jack had never seen that before and that's kind of the main thing we're wanting to do here is we're teaching these boys how to continue the tradition of working on old cars this stuff's kind of dying and we're going to try to keep it alive and these two are going to be doing their part but i'm going to fix up old trucks when you're a grown up i want to be like you yeah <laughs> you be just like him so i'm going to show you guys my oil priming tool real quick and then we're going to fire it up today Let's get after it. Yeah. We pulled the distributor out, and if you don't know what a distributor is, this is what distributes the fire to the cylinder, which lets the engine run. But this gear is ran off the camshaft of the engine, and while the engine's running, it sits here and spins like that. It sends your fire to each cylinder, and anyway, the bottom of the distributor has this key on it, and that key drives your oil pump. I see that key. That slides right into your oil pump and pumps oil throughout your engine. Well, our engine's been completely apart. As you've seen, we put all the pistons in it, so there's no oil anywhere. We made this little 3 8 rod and ground it similar to that key. Yep. We're gonna slide it down in there and we're gonna turn that oil pump with a drill. We're gonna pump oil all throughout the engine. That way we're not starting up a completely dry engine. Yeah. See that oil pump? You see it? Yeah. All right, so now I've got that key inserted into my oil pump. This is where the distributor goes. Put my drill on it. Whoa. <laughs> That's turning that oil pump just like the engine's running. Is that cool in here? Yeah. Look at this. Look at all that oil dripping. Oh, and is it going back in the engine? Yep, it drips back down in there and then it flows right back into the oil pan. Yep. Oh. Okay, so now our oil system is completely primed. We need to get the distributor back in it, get plugs in it, valve cover on it, fuel lines, and coolant. Which we won't bore you guys with all that, but we're going to get it all buttoned up and then we'll, use, we'll see you guys when it's ready to fire. Almost time. Oh yeah. The, uh, the radiator had a crack in it, so we're going to fire it up and run it for a minute, but no driving today. It's time, guys. We're about a month behind when I thought we'd be making our first attempt to fire this thing up, but it's time. Yep. Attempt number one, we've got fuel in it. We've got as much water in it as we can get it to hold. Like I said, the radiator's got a little crack in it. That's not going to stop us for try from trying to fire it. So we're going to give it a it shot. Up. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, get out and go. Go again. It runs. We have a pretty bad exhaust leak. There's all that marble mystery oil I put in the cylinders. All right, Jack, let's that thing idle. Yeah. Guys, that is the first time in over 25 years this truck has ran. And it fires up and idles. 
Obviously, it took a lot of work, but our fuel don't look too good. Hey, it's running on it. That's awesome. The Apache lives. All right, go ahead and kill it. Try to fire it back up. Final day of this episode on the 59 Chevy, and we've got good news and we've got bad news. Good news is we messed with it quite a bit after we filmed yesterday. I adjusted the timing. We messed with the carburetor a little bit, and this thing's running good. It's idling good. It's firing up good, and we haven't driven it yet, but other than just firing up and running and sounding good, we're in good shape. The bad news is this thing is smoking like a freight train and the only thing i can think is that number three cylinder where the piston was stuck it had a spot that i wasn't able to hone out and i made the decision to ignore it and i think maybe that was the wrong decision i've, I've never put an engine together with a bad spot in a cylinder like that so it was we took a gamble and i don't think it worked out it does run but we're gonna have to make some decisions on the future of this truck after this video, and I'll, uh, we'll talk about it at the end of this video. We've, it has not moved under its own power at all, so we're gonna film, trying to back this thing out of here, and maybe we'll take it for a few spins around the pasture. The brakes were almost non-existent. I hit them once and that's what that little hang up was. When I got out, they, uh, they hung for a minute and then I lost all pedal. So pretty much no brakes, but it got out here under its own power. We haven't cleaned it out yet. These older trucks don't have a, they don't start from a key switch. They got ignition on. Hey Woody. Woody's ready. They got, they've got ignition on on the key and then a foot pedal. That little foot pedal engages the starter right there. smoking right now. I know I told you I thought we'll see what it does after it warms up. But... Sounds pretty good. The valves are still a little bit loose. I haven't done the hot adjustment on them yet. It looks like Woody wants to go for a ride. I'm gonna set this camera up and we'll take this thing for a little cruise around the pasture here. Not having any brakes, I don't really wanna take it out on the road, so we'll rip around the pasture a little bit and see how it drives. That's not reverse. There we go. It runs and drives. Oh yeah. Ready, Woody? First gear. Second gear. Sounds like parts are falling off. That's okay. Hang on, Woody. Third gear. No 
noisy, but it runs. It works, Woody. I think it'll spin the tires in this dirt, Woody. Woo. It's hot in here. Let's get out, Woody. <sighs> Guys, that's going to wrap up episode two of our 59 Chevy. And I think it was a huge success. You know, th this truck's been sitting for decades and... Just a few weeks ago, we were knocking a piston out of it with a sledgehammer, and now we just drove it. It runs and drives, not perfect, it doesn't have brakes, but we drove it. We took it from sitting, completely locked up, used the same engine, and we drove it. And that's a success. You did see it was still smoking a little bit. It's not smoking near as bad as it was yesterday, but it is still smoking, and we're going to have some decisions to make. So our options are going to be I, the 235, the spare one in the shop you guys saw at the first of this video. We could put it in, but we're going to have to build motor mounts. And if we're going to go through the trouble of building motor mounts, maybe we we'll want to put a V8 in it. Because I've got a later model 350 that with not a lot more work, you're already building motor mounts. We could have a V8 in this thing. Um, pros and cons. The six cylinder is super simple. It's the original run, drive train for this truck. They're easy to work on. You saw Jack and I put one together pretty much in a day. And here we are the next day driving it. So let us know. What do you want to see? Do you want to see a V8 go in this old truck? Do you want to see it keep an original six cylinder? That's going to be our options. But for right now, it's going to keep the six cylinder that's in it for now. We need to get the brakes working and we need tires. When I thought the brakes were hung up earlier, it was actually one of the tires is dragging. So we need some tires for the factory wheels and get the brakes working and get a radiator and we should be able to drive this thing. It'll smoke some, but that's not going to stop us. As soon as we get those three things, brakes, radiator, tires, we're taking this thing to town. That's going to be our next episode. We're going to try to get this thing roadworthy. And then we'll take your feedback. It's starting to rain on us. We'll take your feedback of whatever you want to see. Six cylinder, V8, and that's what we'll do. Guys, if you like this kind of thing, please consider subscribing. Give us a like, leave us a comment, and we'll catch you on the next one.